What's good Raider Nation? Today I want to talk to you guys about Maurice Hurst. The rookie fifth round pick from last year had a very good 2018 season, but I think he'll have an even better 2019 season and I'll tell you guys why. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about some of the things he did very well, as well as some of the things he needs to improve and build upon. The first thing I want to do is show you guys some of the things he does very, very well, especially for a rookie. And one of those is reading plays. You know, when he was at Michigan, uh, all the teammates and coaches raved about how smart, high IQ of a player he is, as well as how good he is with his hands. Now, you guys see him right here on the screen. I'm going to start this play so you guys can see it. Uh, I'll slow it down as the play st starts to develop a little bit here. Uh, so the quarterback's going to get the ball. It's a play action, and he's pass rushing. But at the same time, he feels the screen coming. And look at how he reads the screen. And he gets through both guys. And I want you guys to notice something on the screen right here. If you guys look closely, you will see that there's three blockers and really only two Raider defenders, right? I mean, everyone else is pretty far off the ball. Uh, honestly, uh, if Maurice Hurst does not make this play, there's so much open space for Joe Mixon, who's a very good playmaker, to make a move. I mean, as the play develops, he even tries to put a juke on Maurice Hurst, and Hurst is able to stop himself and grab onto him and make the tackle. Now, let's just say Maurice Hurst misses this play. Assuming this uh, offensive lineman is able to block the linebacker, uh, you have an extra offensive lineman out there as well that can maybe pick up the corner on the bottom of the screen. Uh, you have the receiver that's going to pick up safety. Honestly, this can almost go for a touchdown. I mean, there's really not much else that's out there uh, as far as uh, able to help make this tackle. But Hurst does a great job. And if you guys watch it from the backside angle, uh, you're going to see something very similar. Again, it's the same play. You're going to see how he's able to uh, feel the play. And he sees that it's a screen coming. And I think the reason why he was able to tell is I want to uh, go back here for a second and show you guys. Uh, what number 62 does now typically when a offensive lineman is going to do uh, they're going to run a screen you're going to essentially lock up like 62 does with Maurice Hurst on this play initially so you see the punch which is good by 62 uh, Hurst is in a very good position as well he's lower than 62 which is good but 62 at this point right here is trying to toss Hurst at that moment right there if you missed it uh, watch it again uh, you're going to see 62 try to toss Maurice Hurst right there. It doesn't work. Hurst is able to capture himself. And now 62 understands that uh, Maurice Hurst is not rushing the passer enough. That now he just has to stay on, on Hurst and make sure Hurst doesn't make the tackle. So he's going to just stay on Maurice Hurst. Uh, but what Hurst does is very good. He disrupts uh, both both the guard and the center from being able to get out there. Very nice play by Hurst. He splits the, the double team. And then look as the, uh, the running back tries making his cut. Hurst stops himself, is able to get a hand on Mixon, wraps him up, and brings him down. Again, it doesn't get better than that. And this is one of the things I really, really like about Hurst. His play recognition was very good for a rookie and this is just one play there's a lot of other plays where he makes the play just based solely on the fact that he's just smarter than the next person i want to move forward and show you guys a couple more plays so moving on i want to get into this play right here raiders versus the cardinals and you're gonna see maurice hurst right here lined up over the offensive guard and i want to start this play so you guys can watch it in real time and i'm going to show you guys the backside angle as well because there's a lot to see uh, from this play and there's a lot of positives in this one play. Uh, one of the things I really like about Hurst is he understands how to win his blocks. Now it's very important that he's playing the one technique in this uh, certain formation because this is a uh, formation with the strong side to the left side of the screen, right? For the offense, the tight end is on the left side of the screen, uh, which means PJ Hall is going to be playing the three technique or uh, what often happens is he's going to be the defensive lineman in this case that's going to take on the double team right because most of the time that's the that's the side that the play is going to be run on um, but I want to show you guys uh, I want to shift back to Hurst and show you guys how he wins his block because it's very impressive uh, so I'll slow it down so you guys can see it in slow motion um, one thing to focus on is watch number 70 the right guard Take his first step to the left. And then essentially he's going to try to hook 
or cut off Maurice Hurst because like most teams in the NFL, the Cardinals are running a zone blocking scheme. So the right guard has to cut off Mo Hurst. And you'll see that Hurst is going to be able to beat number 70 and end up making the play. And I want to show you guys kind of what he does uh, that I think is going to be missed unless you watch this play uh, multiple times. Now, of course, you're going to see number 70 take his step to the left. It's important that Maurice Hurst recognizes that quickly because if he takes too long, he'll end up getting hooked and he'll, he'll just lose uh, the battle. Um, so the play recognition is key. Now, understand something. In this instance right here, if number 70 can hook Hurst and just stop Hurst, which a lot of really good guards at this point would be able to, if number 70 is able to stop Maurice Hurst right here, he would win this block. Maurice Hurst would lose his block. Um, and David Johnson would actually have a really, really big gap. Now, watch Maurice Hurst's hands. Uh, because the offensive lineman does have his hands on the inside of Hurst. But watch Hurst's hands. And look at how he gets the offensive lineman's hands off of himself. So Maurice Hurst is using his hands to knock the offensive lineman's hands off of him. Uh, watch it again in slow motion. Um, again, it's nice by the lineman to, to initially get the good positioning, but Hurst is able to knock the hands off. In this instance right here, Hurst knows where the play is going. He's recognized it again, very good recognition. You're going to see that the offensive lineman is going to once again try to cut Hurst off. But watch Hurst position his body and avoid the offensive lineman. You're going to see the offensive lineman try to get to Hurst. But you'll see Hurst put his left hand uh, in front of 70 and kind of dip his shoulder and turn his shoulders just a little bit. And what that does is that forces the offensive lineman to not be able to grab Hurst from the inside of his pads. Now, as an offensive lineman, as a former offensive lineman, the way you block a defensive lineman is you hold the inside of their pads. In this case, Hurst is going to turn his body, right? And uh, you see his left hand up there. He turns his body and is able to avoid the offensive lineman. So all the offensive lineman can do is really just push Hurst. Uh, Hurst is able to get out in front of the guard. And Hurst has won his block. And he's done his job. He's contained his gap. Um, and it's very important because in the NFL, everything's based on gaps. If every single player on the defense is able to contain their gaps... The defense is going to stop every single play. If one person uh, loses or is not able to contain his gap, the offense will, will go for can score a touchdown on any given play. Uh, and it's very important that Maurice Hurst wins because David Johnson was looking to cut through that hole. And the fact that Hurst wins his block and you have the backside defender defensive end also coming down, there's nowhere this running back can go. And, and it's very important to note that because of the fact that Hurst is able to turn his body and and just win off the off of uh, technique, right? The, he recognizes play quickly. He is able to get number 70's hands off of him, and then he's able to turn his body when needed. You know, all of these different moving parts are very important, especially for a young rookie defensive lineman. You know, a lot of the time, uh, what ends up happening is. Uh, linemen come out and they get better year three four or five you know Hurst is already pretty damn good and i really like where he is today as far as his play recognition i also want to show you guys uh, some of his hand usage and some of the way he uh, wins battles using his hands here's a play where maurice Hurst is going to use his hands to win the block he ends up sacking philip rivers very important to be able to win using your hands you see it from the all 22 he throws 60 to the side uh, he kind of turns just a little bit so 76 can't really get to him he ends up getting the sack on philip rivers now philip rivers is trying to quickly throw this pass um, and he ends up not being able to throw it because of the coverage now of course you can say hey you know Hurst barely got in there but it's all about that disruption and that's the most important part. You have to be able to disrupt the play. It's not always about sacks, right? Pressure's a, a real statistic. A quarterback hits are a real statistic. Again, from the backside angle, you're going to see it a little bit better. Uh, Hurst knows that this is going to be a pass. Um, and, and again, you're going to see him 
use his hands. It's very, very important because number 60 initially punches Hurst. Uh, if you guys missed it, watch it again. Uh, you're going to see number 60 six, use his left hand. He gets his left hand on Hurst. Um, and again, Hurst catches that left hand. And look at Hurst's right arm. He's going to put it on the back of the elbow of 66. And he's going to initially punch it off of him. And 66 is going to be caught off, of that, off balance. And then... Um, of course, Hurst is able to get around him, move his body a little bit, avoids the double team by 76, and then he disrupts the play, which is uh, very, very good, and then he ends up just cleaning it up for a sack. Uh, now, again, this is why I really, really like Hurst. I think he has a lot of game, and I think he's going to improve a lot still. Again, year one to year two is one of the biggest improvements any defensive lineman or any player in general will have. All right, so here's another play similar to this last play where Maurice Hurst uses his hands to win the block. Uh, here's another play. Now, this is going to be a running play to Carlos Hyde uh, towards the right side of the field and um, or left side of the screen, right, right side of the field for the offense. Uh, one thing I want you guys to notice is if you guys look at the left guard, you can kind of see how he's angling his body, essentially why he's angled that way. And, and I'm positive Maurice Hurst uh, read this. The guard is angling his body that way because he wants Maurice Hurst to run upfield. He wants him to run upfield because it's going to create that lane. Now, understand this was a third down, uh, and I think they needed about one to two yards to pick the first up here. Uh, and you're going to see Hurst use his hands. Again, this is something that I love about his game is the fact that he's able to fight people off using his hands. Uh, and here's a perfect example of that. You're going to see the offensive guard uh, lean just a little bit too much and Hurst just, just goes right past him. Again, this is what good hand technique would do for a defensive lineman. Look at the fact that he's able to just slip right by him and the Raiders are able to stop this play. Now, of course, the linebacker was already in there. There wasn't much of a gap anyways, uh, but Hurst still won his block and I, I think that's very, very important. You know, he he's not tripped. He, he's the one that actually ends up tricking this left guard um, by leaning just a little bit to the left side of the screen. Again, you're going to see Hurst take a step to his inside. The guard leans, and then look at Hurst's right hand and his left hand. He's going to do a one-two uh, combo. Right hand uh, on the back of the shoulder, and then left hand's going to go around the offensive guard. And that's how it's done right there. I love the fact that he's so good with his hands. The last thing I want to talk about is a player's ability to fight through a double team, a block, and just the ability to not give up on a play. And here's a perfect example of why you don't give up. So you're going to see Hurst lined up uh, over the uh, right guard and right tackle, and you're going to see him essentially make this play. Um, and it's very important. I'm going to show it to you guys in slow motion from the backside angle why it's so important that he did not give up. You guys are going to notice right away that uh, essentially the running back would have scored, right? So you see that the fact that he got double teamed initially and then he gets off of his block. Very, very important because if you want, look at the running back right now, the running back is going to break this tackle. And at this point right here, the running back is, is he's not off balance. He's not going to fall. He's going to run and there's no one that would stop him uh, because you see the player on the ground here. Uh, there's no one that would be able to stop this running back at this point from scoring this touchdown. He's not off balance. Nothing's going to dive in. But you see Hurst not give up on the play, get in there and stop the running back. And that's huge. You just saved the touchdown. And, and in fact, on this um, on this uh, uh, sequence of plays, they ended up kicking a field goal. They did not score a touchdown. And if Maurice Hurst did not keep fighting, he did not keep running after the play, this would have been a touchdown. Now, it doesn't matter because we got our asses kicked anyways, but it's still important to understand that uh, when there's players out there that don't give up, that will continue to fight through the blocks, they have that motor, something that is often talked about uh, from his college coaches. That's very, very important, and I love that. That's That's one of those things that you can't you can't have a player uh, continue to chase a a play right you can't force a player to develop that that starts from when you're younger your college days your high school days when you know pop warner 
it starts when you're young and it and it continues through there's definitely players in the nfl that are lazy uh, that won't chase these plays down uh, mo Hurst is not one of those players and that's one of the things i absolutely love about his game moving on i want to lastly talk about maurice Hurst and what he needs to do to improve his game Hurst is very very good for a rookie but going into year two i think one of the things i noticed on tape was his strength and when he gets double teamed I didn't like those two things. Now, he's not weak, so don't think I'm saying he's weak. I think he could get much stronger. And honestly, just looking at his pictures from year one to year two, he already looks much stronger. He looks fitter. He looks quicker uh, as far as OTAs. So I think that will not be an issue. But I think one of the issues he had last year was when he got double teamed, he was blown off the line of scrimmage. Another thing that also happened often last year was when Hurst and P.J. Hall were both in together, P.J. Hall was the rookie that was getting double teamed, not Maurice Hurst. So if you think about that, this year, if Hurst does take that step where he becomes a top tier defensive lineman, then he's going to start getting double teams. And last year, he did not do well against double teams. So I would want to see how he improves that. Uh, and to be honest with you, I know, I know a lot of Raider fans are really high on Hurst. I'm really high on Hall. Primarily because P.J. Hall had a higher learning curve than Maurice Hurst. Plus, when the game slows down uh, for Hall, I think he'll get much more improved. And last year, I saw the double teams going towards P.J. Hall over Maurice Hurst. And uh, I think that's for a reason. Now, you can say Hurst had more sacks. But with that, Hall also got double teamed more often. So Hall would have to beat two players when Hurst would only have to beat one player. So I think a lot of that needs to be factored into it. But I want to know what you guys think about both of our uh, second year young defensive rookies uh, or going into their second year defensive linemen. I want to know what you guys think. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.